Hi, it's me, Carol Ann Sherman again, and we're going to continue on drawing with a grid. Any of you who are familiar with my work know that uh, I have my own way of looking at things, and that's what I'm up here in North Carolina to do this weekend. Uh, I expect to learn a whole bunch from Art of the Carolinas. I'm also going to show you the second part of my drawing lesson, which would be how to distort reality just a little bit, because that's what I like to do. So I'm going to once again use my picture of Don King. I hope you saw my other little lesson. And we're going to go back to the same image. We're going to map it out the same way we did because we did this before. We know that it is directly proportionate to this larger piece of paper that I want to transfer the image onto. So, but this time the big difference is going to be tricky because I'm going to put my halfway line. I think we'll move them over. I tend to like to go one side or the other. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just using my ruler for a straight edge, which is what I usually do. So I'm going to move my half. Well, we'll move them this way a little bit. I think is an even better idea. We'll move our half line that way. Our second half line. What I want to do with this image is kind of get a better feeling for perspective. And he's a very big, powerful man. He looks When you look at someone like Don King, he looks like you're looking up at him because he's just got that kind of a persona. And that's what I like to draw most, so this worked out just fine. So we're going to put this center line in my image is going to correlate with this center line in my drawing. Okay? Don't get nervous. I know, it's not even. That's okay. And then we're going to do this one. Not quite halfway. That will be our third line. And then down here we're going to put... Let's see what we have going on in the bottom half of this painting. I think we're going to move his tie down. I like that tie a lot. So we're going to make that more important. We're going to put a very big area here. Okay, and we're ready to go. It's really important to be able to draw, and it's nothing to be scared of. It's really quite a painless exercise. Again, I am folding this paper in half. This is my image, and this will represent this line. I'm still going to fold my paper straight in half once more. That'll be correlating with this line. And one more time, which is going to give us this line and this line. I know these aren't even, and I know they're not squares, but I probably will call them that anyway, so bear with me. I like to start my drawings on the upper left-hand side of my page because I am right-handed, and then I do not drag the graphite all across the paper, and I very rarely work with an eraser. So what I'm going to do is come back up to the upper left-hand corner of this, and we're going to start with Don's head which is, this is Don King, and this is his head and his hair. And I may exaggerate even a little more, well, not too much, but this is where his head comes out to. This is halfway on this square. So we're gonna figure, his head's about a quarter of the way. This would be about halfway, this would be about a quarter. So we're gonna start here. His eyeglasses will come here, right over to the bridge. Got great eyebrows. And we'll start with his hair. And it comes down kind of over his glasses on the sides. We can just see his eyelids from this. You can barely see his eyes, but we know they're there. And we'll give him these nice heavy lids. We're going to move on to the next square. Here's his chin. Comes out this way. Can't go too low because this is a very small box. So we're going to have a little bit of a distortion here. Actually, we're going to have a lot, but that's the purpose of this exercise. Here's his collar, which only comes about that big. Here's his tie, which comes down this way. I can just barely see the corner of his mouth there. His suspenders don't even come halfway. So we're going to put it just like that. He merges into the back. 
Now we're going to move on to the next square. And we get two suspenders. This is our big square, so we have lots of room to play with. I'm going to X this out on my photograph so I know that this is my center. I'm going to X it out lightly on my paper so that I know that this is the center. That means in this top quarter, his suspender comes right from here and meets up with his suspender up there. His sleeve starts over here and comes off the page up there. You can see that there's just a very small dark square. This is something for you to look for when you're transferring an image. There are a lot of merges, color merges and value merges back here, but this is something that you can always look for. It's helpful in getting your drawing put together. I'm going to move on and get up to the left-hand corner. Let's do the same thing with the X in this box, which means the center's right there. Now, because this box is wider, our center is going to be way over here, so it's going to distort this drawing. His hair comes almost to the corner here, right to the, the it comes almost to the center of this box. His ear is there, his face comes down this way, his hairline goes up this way. This lens of his eyeglasses is going to be much bigger. It's larger because that's the way we have the center line moved over. Don't try to cheat. If you're going to try to use this grid, don't open your whole paper up and then draw for it because it defeats the purpose. The watch is going to come right here. The face of his watch is going to come right there. Now, because we have a larger space in this one, we can put more detail into this area, but you can come back and catch up with that later. I'm going to shadow this in. We're going to do in the other parts of his suspenders like that. There's a little dark triangle that comes here and then that other little dark shape there. We have a light shape and then we have this dark shape continued that cuts the corner. So now we have gone from, we have taken Dawn from that look to this look and it's still a viable drawing. So you can go back to your drawing now and you can take this and either trace over it on another piece of paper so you have a nice clean line drawing to paint from or you can take your eraser if you're inclined to use an eraser and take out your grid lines and freshen it up from here and that's pretty much a good start on your next painting. This is Carol Ann Sherman and I'm speaking to you from Art of the Carolinas and I urge you to look for my DVD and have lots of fun drawing. That's one of the most important parts of art and there isn't a real right or wrong. You can do it however you want it. Thank you.